everyone. My name is Nicole Richardson and I'm from Authors Press. Today is February 23rd, 2022, and I'm gathered here with Dr. Barbara Tenbrick, who's the author of Traveling with Isaac Newton, On the Island with Charles Darwin, During the Pandemic with Edward Jenner, and Through the Microscopes of Antony Van Leeuwenhoek. Did I pronounce it right? Pretty good. All right. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Barbara? I'm Dr. Barbara Tenbrink. I, I uh, retired two years ago and discovered that I am a quite prolific author. Oh my gosh. And uh, in the two years since I've been retired, I have published 25 books in six genre. Unbelievable, unbelievable. But today we're talking about my books that are here in the London Book Fair. I'm so, so, so excited. They're all, they're, they're all beautiful, by the way. I love the colors that you chose. The shade of gray, really nice. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but like, I would wear that. Yes, and gray's a real hot color. This, this I like if you watch in home improvement shows, gray is- uh, Yeah, that's color. how I feel. It's real modern, but also like classy and like, I feel like it applies to all people. Looks good on everything. Well, we'll talk about it because uh, you see on my cover of this book, the background is fabrics. So there's something oh, about that that yeah. we'll have to come back to. Okay, okay. I would like to talk about that too. So uh, I asked you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Could you tell us a little about uh, a little bit about each of the books? Just a little brief oh. description. Oh, thank you, Nicole. Oh my gosh. Well, I love how you introduced my books. Thank you so much. And you did them exactly in order. So my first book, my first biography, I call them young adult biographies. And my first young adult biography was Traveling with Isaac Newton. So this, what I wanted to happen, well, Nicole, I guess I need to Tell you a little bit more about myself. I am a I am a science teacher. I was a science teacher for a very long time, and all of my books are biographies of scientists. So my first book was um, Traveling with Isaac Newton, and here is a theme you're going to see throughout the four books that we're taking to London. One, they are all British scientists. That's not true, but three of them are British scientists. And what I do is I, the scientist is fact. The, we know the history of that scientist. The science is recorded through history. So what I've done is I've added a layer of fiction by introducing a fictional character. And in this book that you asked about, thank you so much, uh, a young woman, maybe a next door neighbor, invites Isaac Newton to travel with her and her family to the coast of England. And uh, of course, Isaac Newton, science is force and motion, gravity, light, optics, uh, curvature of the earth. Oh my gosh, brilliant. And so we develop all that science as he and this next door neighbor family travels to the coast of Great Britain. Um, so could you give us a little brief description on the other books too? Okay, thank you. Well, my second, my second biography was Charles Darwin. So again, we have a real life scientist in Galapagos. I stayed for three weeks and the, so there's so this book is kind of autobiographical because what happened to me in Galapagos, I put into a narrative story of what happened to Charles Darwin on the island. So uh, it's a beautiful little story. It's the exact same premise as traveling with Isaac Newton on the island with Charles Darwin. He meets a young native boy on the island, a native boy 
happens to uh, rent himself out, his boat out, as a naturalist. So this young male uh, native on the island offers his services to Charles Darwin to take Charles Darwin on an expedition around the island looking at the natural phenomenon. And they, the relationship of Charles Darwin to my young naturalist guide develops the science of adaptation for Charles Darwin. My third novel, uh, my third biography is, uh, was that we are taken to London is during the pandemic with Edward Jenner. Now, Nicole, this book is very timely, very uh, relevant to what is happening now with COVID. So during the pandemic with Edward Jenner takes place in Great Britain. He's a British scientist. We're taking him to London because he's a British scientist. And they, they are experiencing a worldwide pandemic of smallpox. So terrible, deadly disease of smallpox. And again, listen to me. Edward Jenner is a true scientist. His science is true. We have all of the records. Uh, all of my scientists kept scientific notebooks and those notebooks have survived through time. So that's all fact. We have their notebooks. We have the, the history of this scientist. But my story pairs my scientist with a young male person who is a uh, very, very respectful of Edward Jenner. In fact, sets one goal in life to be the physician's assistant to Edward Jenner. So Edward Jenner and my hero, Robert, um, treat lots and lots of patients because they're, they're fighting the battle of this worldwide pandemic of smallpox and Edward Jenner, so, so our listeners will know, Edward Jenner invented vaccinations. And he, due to him, we have eradicated smallpox through vaccination. He did it with a, a vaccine he made out of cowpox, which is also a pox disease. It's also a virus, but less deadly than smallpox. Now, my newest book, which was only finished, only published, written and published in January is Through the Microscopes of Antonia von Lea Winhook. Antonia von Lea Winhook is a true scientist. He is, again, his thinking, all of his recordings have passed down to us through history. So this is all recorded in history. We know all this. But what I have, well, let me back up. So Antony von Lea Winhook did not invent the microscope, but he used it very zealously. He loved it. He loved seeing things that nobody else in the world had ever seen. He looked at drops of water. He looked at blood. He looked at parts of the body. He looked at uh, cells. He looked at, and he recorded everything. And he's different, Nicole. He is not a British scientist. He's a Dutch scientist. But he sent all his recordings to the Royal Society of London, which gave us the idea, well, let's send him to the London Book Fair. So again, the same premise as my other three books that I've already shared with you. And Tony Van Lea Winhook is the scientist, that's true. But the microscope was used to study fabrics. That's why I have a piece of fabric in my background. So Antony von Lea Winhoof was a fabric merchant. Now here's where it gets gaga. Oh my gosh, Nicole. The Tenbrink family, my husband's family, this is my married name, they are Dutch. And they lived at the same time as Antony von Lea Winhoek. And 
They were Dutch merchants of fabric. What would you say is the main message you want to get across to your readers? Well, what I have learned, Nicole, is that young readers like biographies. They, biographies themselves are very engaging, whether it's history or science or or how he how did he do that? How did she do that? What was their thinking process? And people like to puzzle that through. So in my books, I I help the readers uh, navigate the science by putting together a fictional character with the science figure, famous, famous figure, and together they unravel the science, which is exactly what I want the reader to do. Oh my gosh, maybe I can look through a microscope or maybe I can convince my neighbor to get a vaccination for COVID or, or uh, maybe I can look at different birds and why their shapes are different that Charles Darwin told us why one bird is this shape and one bird is this shape. Uh, or, or so easy because our readers are riding bicycles, they're on rollerblades, they're on, I mean, force in motion. Right. Everybody can relate to the science in my book. So would you say these books are a series together or are they each a standalone on their own? That's such a good question. It's such a good question. When I wrote Traveling with Isaac Newton, it never dawned on me that I would write five. We haven't even talked five. about In the Springtime with Rachel Carson because she's an uh, American scientist. And so we thought, well, let's send our, let's send our, British scientists to London, and that's what we're doing. But it never dawned on me I would write five, and and now I have written five. And the the thought is, well, will I re- will I write five more? So they stand they stood alone with Isaac Newton, and then all of a sudden the others came. No, they're not a series and such. I I wanted them to look similar. You'll see that the um, covers have a very similar design. We yeah. do a composite photographs of the scientist and his or her work. The, the, uh, the titles are all prepositional phrases. It's unbelievable. It's so beautifully done. But no, you're right. They are all standalone. A, a reader could read one and not the other but I'd want them to read all of them because I think they would like them. Okay, so in a way, yes, they are a series, but you don't have to read them right. like a like a series, like this book, then the next book, then the next no, book. No, no, you no. could read, you could start with the last one and it wouldn't affect the story. Correct. Okay, that's good to know. So you mentioned that these are for young adult readers. Is this only for young adult readers? Who's your target audience? My target audience is junior high and high school. If you, uh, I don't, uh, I don't choose a word. Like if I want to use a five syllable word in my writing, I will do that. My, if, if my readers can learn some vocabulary as they're reading, that's great with me. All of the paired fictional characters, every one of them, are young adults. They're, um, okay, so Robert in this story, he starts as a physician, as he graduates from school in, in England at the age of 14. So he becomes a physician assistant. He starts his career at the age of 14. So that kind of gives you an idea of the, if if my fictional character is 14, then I'm I'm targeting readers who are about 14 years of age. What is your biggest source of inspiration? Well, honey, my science career. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh, well, I beg to tell you the sweetest story, Nicole, listen to me. My very first year of teaching, So a teacher has a classroom, it's called real estate. A teacher has a classroom. And then 
in our classroom, we want to make our classroom, the classroom itself, help the child to learn. So what do we do on these walls? They're called bulletin boards. How do we, what, what information do we put on bulletin boards to help our students learn? Well, I drew pictures of Edward Jenner, Antonio Von Lea Winhook, Isaac Newton, Charles Darwin. I had pictures of them. I'm sorry for my dogs barking. That's okay, they have stuff to say too. Ah. Yeah. That's their uh, input. Anyway, I drew giant posters of these very scientists. They've been with me my whole life. I, I took them into the classroom with me. So when I'm teaching a, a, a lesson on adaptation, then there's a picture of Charles Darwin right there. So my inspiration was my own career. Uh, maintaining a journal, nobody in my classroom could get away with not writing the lesson for the day in their science journal. So you'll see that theme throughout my books. Oh my gosh, every one of these scientists kept journals. It, it's unbelievable the power of writing and illustrating. So let's look at Antony Von Lea Winwood. He's looking at things in a microscope that nobody on earth had ever seen before. If he hadn't written that down, we would not know. We wouldn't know. What does literary success look like to you? What makes you feel successful as an author? Well, Nicole, honey, I just want people to read. And I want them to read my books. I think if they read one book, they would realize how fun they are. Oh my gosh, the narratives, the history, it's amazing. The, the science, of course, but I've, I've written my books in a way to engage my readers. And that's my goal. I want people to read my books. <laughs> Literary success would be people reading your books. Yes, yes. So out of these four books, which one was your favorite to write? Well, it's such a good question. I love your questions, honey. Listen. I don't know if this is true for all authors, but I love my book. I love them. I'm like, this is a true statement. I have probably read these four biographies, each one. I've probably read each one more than 200 times. I love them. I, I take them to bed at night. I read them in bed before I go to sleep. I, I love my books. I love the stories. I love, oh, I like how I worded that or whatever. Of course, of course, of course, this was my first one. So, so this was the first and, and uh, it just made so much sense to me. Oh my gosh, of course, if Isaac Newton is going to come up with these theories, he would have to travel. So I put him on a trip to travel to the coast and then, um, this was the next one. And of course I went to Galapagos. The same thing happens to Charles Darwin that happened to me when I was there. And I've always loved Charles Darwin because I was a science teacher. And adaptation, it just it makes so much sense to all this diversity on our planet. So I love that book. I mean, it's hard to pick the book. Now, this one I'm in love with. This one has the sweetest story. Here's the other thing, Nicole. My scientist and my fictional character all have so much respect for each other. That's the amazing thing is I'm able to develop this relationship. The respect for the knowledge these people have and the work ethic. Oh my gosh, we're not talking uh, eight to five job. These people want to know something. Their the curiosity is off the chart. And all of that is captured in my books. Now, I have to say, 
This one is so beautifully written. If you're writing a book about 1700 Europe, Nicole, you, listen, this is a period of time when extravagance and elegance and elaborate, oh my gosh, elaborate things. And we're talking about business fabrics. So this one was so fun to write because it is luscious. It is delicious. My descriptions of the costumes, the uh, extravagant lifestyle, the Tenbrink family owned an import export business out of Amsterdam. And Tony Van Leeuwenhoek is from Delft, but he traveled to Amsterdam. My Tim Brink family owned an export import company out of Amsterdam. The elaborate lifestyle is so delicious. The descriptions in my book. So I love this. Plus it's autobiographical of my husband's family, which was unbelievable to uncover. Unbelievable. This one is illustrated, not with illustrations, but with photographs painted on walls of all the history that I, that I talk about in this book. Unbelievable. So uh, how old were you when you wrote your very first story? Oh, probably first grade. I went to really good school systems. I went to Department of Defense. My father was military and I went to Department of Defense. And guess what? We did reading, we did writing, we did grammar, we did handwriting. Of course, this was a hundred years ago, so maybe everybody did. But one of the things we did was we wrote. And my book, my stories were always about animals. I'm a huge, my PhD is about animals. Um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I, I'm a big animal advocate. I, I've owned every kind of animal there is to own, including cows and um, horses. Now I own zebras. Oh my God, where'd they come from? I have a heard of 24 zebras, but um, I love animals. I And of course that's all science too, biology. So um, my first story has to be first grade, second grade, we wrote, we wrote in school and paper, paper is flat. So as a military family, we traveled and you couldn't haul a bunch of trinkets around, but paper, you could pack flat and it could go to the next port of call. So my mother allowed me to pack my stories from this, you know, from this port of call to the next port of call to the next port of call and, and I still have them. <laughs> so what do the people around you think about your writing? How do they feel? Well, they're, they're all amazed because Nicole, I thought when I retired, I would have to have another business. Um, cows, zebras. I wanted a, I wanted a boutique. I wanted to open a boutique. I, I always knew that I would re retire from education and have another business, have another career in my life. The fact that it, it, it morphed into writing and books and book promotion and uh, interviews like such as this has been a giant surprise. Uh, the people around me all said, oh, when you retire, you're not gonna be one of those who put your feet up. And I haven't put my feet up yet. <laughs> uh, and on that note, I wanna know, are you pleased with the outcome of these books? All of uh -huh. them? Uh -huh. Is there anything you would change individually each of the books nope nope mm -mm. and uh i don't know how other people write but i start with word one and i end with the final chapter i just it's a stream of consciousness just this is i i also want to say and i i don't know how much i of this i believe but uh i i feel uh some divine intervention because the books i write the books so easily they, they flow out of my pen. And um, 
yeah. from the brain to the heart and out your hand. I love that. Thank you, Nicole. That's very sweet. Welcome. That's how my mom describes my poetry. She says it goes from my brain to my heart to my hand. I love that. Yeah. So I have an, another question that isn't one of the interview questions, but I wanted to ask it earlier. So each of the covers is a different color. Is there a significance to the colors for each book or is it just visual aesthetics? Visual aesthetics. Okay, so well, you, you did take, a good job. This was our first. And notice how uh, Isaac Newton is a compilation of his science ideas. There's a there's a uh, prism. So th so he was he talked to us about he taught us about optics. There's an apple. There's a telescope. He invented the the one of the telescopes. I'm sorry, I don't remember which one. And uh, here's planets because he gave us planetary motion gravity, of course. So I love, this was the first one. And the color then went with the compilation of Isaac Newton's science. So this was the first. I wanted the same thing. I wanted a compilation. So we have Charles Darwin. These are portraits of our scientists in, in history. But you notice also there's the finches, remember it was the different finches on the different islands that he went. Oh my gosh. Each island has its own characteristics in the finches. And then you'll also see that every, all of my covers have the scientists' writings. The notebook that I keep coming back to, how important a notebook is in your studies. I don't care if you study science or, or social studies, but but writing and, and uh, gathering your thoughts, putting it in writing and in science illustrating is so important. So the compilation, the inclusion of the scientists' writings, actual, these are actual pages for, from the various scientists. Now, uh, same with Every single, every single patient Dr. Jenner had is recorded in history. Unbelievable. Every single That's patient. Cool. So cool. And uh, so I, 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 I find their journals and I want some of that on my cover. The uh, interesting thing about Antony von Leo Winhoek was he was Dutch. But he got this idea, well, let me send letters of my drawings to the Royal Society of London. And the Royal Society of London went, I don't know what this is, but there's something to it. And they translated all his work from Dutch into English, because the language of the Royal Society is English and published it. And that's how we have his notes. He sent them to a body of learned scientists and they said, yes, we want to we want to keep these for posterity. That's really cool. I didn't I would have never known any of this if I had an interview. So that's really cool. So I've just got a couple more questions for you before we wrap this up. Uh, where can readers find out more about you and all your books? Well, I have a website. BarbaraTenbrinkBooks.com. Uh, all my books are on Amazon.com. I have a, a page on Amazon colon Dr. Barbara Tenbrink. I'm on. I have a YouTube channel, YouTube Dr. Barbara Tenbrink. Um, I have. Uh, if if a reader wants to talk to me, uh, my website has a contact us. I'm happy for them to ha uh, contact me. And then, of course, Authors Press is my publisher, and they can always contact Authors Press. Okay. And that leads me to the very last question that I've got for you today is, how do you feel about working with Authors Press? Well, y'all, you, Nicole, and, and all the people at Authors Press have been very good to me. I don't know anything about promotion. I don't know anything about marketing. I wish I did. I, I, I feel very ignorant about 
the whole publishing industry. That's not my language. No, you know, it took me an entire career to learn the language of science education. And uh, now I'm just starting writing and publishing and I don't know that language. And Authors Press has kind of navigated the um, this giant thing. I mean, London and uh, so, Nicole, some of my other books, we've sent books to the Frankfurt Book Fair. We've sent books, yeah. So we've sent books, my books are going worldwide, unbelievable. I would not have been able to do that without the help of Authors Press navigating this industry for me. I'm really glad we could help you. Uh, I think that's all the questions I have for you today because I'm looking and I don't see any more. So is there anything else you wanted to mention uh, before yes, we wrap yes, this up? Yes. Come see me in London. Come see me in London. Okay, every all, all my listeners, uh, well, they're, they'll be watching this in London. So I'm glad you're here. Yay, I'm so glad you're here. Come back to the booth. April 6th at 12.30 p.m. London time. I'll be signing books for you. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think that's all the questions I have for you today. It was such an honor to discuss all these books with you, Barbara. I really enjoy learning and I love your energy. Your energy energy energizes me. It really does. Oh, thank you so much, Nicole. I love talking to you too. And I love talking about my books. I'm in love with them too. And I love the fact that you like them, Nicole. Thank you so much. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to Authors Press either through our email or via our phone number. Um, but that's all. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you, Nicole. You're welcome. You stay safe and have a nice day. Bye. Bye.